the Amaranthaceae, otherwise known as the Amaranth family. Some characteristics of the Amaranthaceae, it is a dicotyledonous, so we have the netted veins and flower parts in fours and fives. There's a lot of variation of flower and leaf structure in this family. Some of the flowers are very insignificant and some are quite showy. Frequently these plants are succulents and tolerate um, drought. And also they tend to be salt tolerant. A lot of them seem to have sort of evolved along salt water areas, shorelines. Most of them are annuals or possibly perennial herbs. Occasionally there's some sub shrubs or vines, but in general these are basically soft, green, non-woody plants. They often contain betalane pigments, which are somewhat interesting. They're distinct from anthocyanins, but they are uh, also produce oranges and reds and yellows like anthocyanins do. Many are considered weeds. Some would have agricultural or floral value, however. Some characteristics. Chances are you'll recognize some of these flowers. They uh, blow amaranth and are, is uh, commonly planted and uh, used as a flower bed plant. But many other species have very inconspicuous flowers. They are angiosperms, as I mentioned. They are in the Caryophyllales, which is the order that includes the Amaranthiaceae. There's approximately 180 genera, over 2,500 species. And it includes many species that were previously in other families that uh, have been reorganized, and uh, most notably the Chenopodiaceae. The goosefoot family has now uh, been absorbed into the Amaranthaceae. Looking on our plant evolutionary tree, we're in the upper left in the core, I, core true di dicots. Um, the family there is in between the gonorales and the conales. Notable species, both food and ornamental species, but also a lot of what many people just consider weeds. Of course, a weed is just a plant growing where you don't want it to, so not everyone considers them weeds. Spinach, probably the most famous of the family, but also uh, the beet family, the beta vulgaris. That plant has produced sugar beets, chard, and beetroot for us. Beetroot being the red beets that you commonly eat. Uh, they're called beetroot more commonly in Europe. Amaranthus species have been used as a new grain crop and um, also leaf crops, but it also contains pigweed and other ornamental plants. Globe amaranth, I already showed you a picture, is Gomphrina globosa. Coxcomb is Celiosa, Celosia, Cristata, and then quinoa is also in this family. So some edible examples of the amaranthaceae, sugar beet, beta vulgaris, has been cultivation probably since 1000 BC. Sugar extraction factory was established as early as 1801 in Poland partly in response to another supply of sugar cane being shut off due to some political issues. Uh, originally it was a sea beet, probably on the Mediterranean coast, that has been uh, selected and, and um, improved to produce um, agriculturally useful products. It is the production al commercial production alternative to sugar cane that uh, produces exactly the same sugar, but in a, of a species that's a little bit more temperate adapted and uh, with different growth uh, parameters than sugar cane. The leaves of the sugar beet are what are sold as chard and consumed like spinach. It's used as an animal food in many cultures and it contains betanins, betanins that are harvested for food coloring, for a natural food coloring. These are, for example, the purple that makes beets purple and some of the other bright colors you see in this family. There's a lot of folk medicine uses for it, and these uh, commonly contain oxalic acid. There you can see a couple gentlemen in front of a large feed field of sugar beet. Looks just like Iowa, except it's not soybeans. Interestingly, the sugar beet is also used like we used a jack-o'-lantern in uh, Europe, especially in England. They have, they call them mango wurzels in Europe and in England, and they have a variety of somewhat comical things that they do with them, including hurling competitions and turning them into alcoholic beverages. And interestingly, they har har carve them out and put a candle in them on um, 
a night they call Punky Night that some it usually is the fourth Thursday in October, and some people say it's related to Halloween, some say it isn't related to Halloween. You can see them hanging on the right there as a competition. They have just recently started doing jack-o'-lanterns. That's uh, sort of the new modern European, or new modern British take on Punky Night. So another example of edible amaranthaceae is quinoa, a, much pro a grain that's been promoted a lot in recent years. It's um, very high in protein for a vegetable, and it, importantly, it's got a balanced protein in it so that it uh, contains all the amino acids that are useful for growth. A lot of uh, vegetable proteins do not. And uh, it's also high in calcium for a plant. Origin was in the Andes, Bolivia, Ecuador area where the Incas, high elevation uh, areas. And uh, as such, it's adapted to high elevations with warm days and cool nights. And uh, has been, was eaten for centuries by the Incas. It was considered a sacred grain by then for many, many years. When the Spanish came in, they forced them to quit planting it and plant wheat, which, of course, is a much less well-adapted and uh, less complete protein. So recent years, quinoa has become of uh, much more interest in uh, sort of the health food uh, industry. You can see quinoa grain, uh, quinoa um, pastas in stores and all kinds of quinoa mixes and quinoa soup and quinoa everything. The photograph there below, you can certainly see it looks like a, a high mountain in the background there and a gentleman who is doing some research on quinoa and then a couple close-ups of the plant and for sure it does look a lot like pigweed. Another example of edible amaranthaceae is spinach. And again, there's another picture. It looks like Iowa, only it isn't soybeans. It's spinach. Uh, calcium level is uh, very high in um, spinach, but unfortunately not quite as available as it is in broccoli. It has enough calcium oxalate in it that uh, it uh, can bind up so that you think you're getting calcium, but you really aren't. It is, however, a very nutritious vegetable. It's also very high in, high in iron. And again, there's... Um, uh, possibility that that's bound up so it's not as accessible to your gut as um, it is in some other products. The origin is in the Middle East, the Persia of the historic days and Iran uh, today in that area. It was introduced to China through India by 650 AD and uh, is very heavily uh, grown in China now. In the U.S., the crop uh, annual crop value is over $200 million. Horticultural examples of the amaranth ACA, these uh, very charming little globe, fo globe flowers, globe amaranth, is Gomphrena globosa, used widely in flower beds. The leaves are actually made into a tea in, in Trinidad, and the flower heads are used uh, to make lays in Hawaii rather than using the um, uh, easily wilting flower that traditional lays were uh, made from. The uh, globe amaranth heads are used, and they last much longer. There um, is an enormous variety of colors and shapes and sizes of this plant available today due to interest by the horticultural industry. And very similar, but different, is uh, Celosia cristata, uh, also called coxcomb. I don't think it looks too much like a coxcomb, but that's what it's called. Again, comes in, at this point in time, dozens of colors and shapes and sizes and heights and is uh, very widely planted. Here's Iowa Amaranthaceae. Pigweed is, uh, we have both native and non-native amaranthus in the state. On the left is uh, Amaranthus albus, which is indeed native here. And on the right is Amaranthus retroflexus, which is considered a weed worldwide, except for where it's eaten. And it is eaten quite uh, extensively in some cultures. The uh, leaves are very nutritious, similar to spinach. Another non-native uh, but very common uh, species in Iowa is lamb's quarters, also called pigweed, depending on which common name you're talking about, Kenopodium album. And again, it's one that most people consider a weed. The people on the right, how it, the, those photographs were actually somebody very happily growing this as uh, an herb. So there they had actually purchased seeds on eBay and grown them in cups and had now transplanted them for later harvest considered a food crop in Asia and Africa. Toxicity of this plant family, in general, not too horrible, but um, there, is, uh, there are examples of the amaranthus species 
causing problems in farm animals that for one reason or other have been um, you know, in a pen and then let out into an area where there's a lot of this plant growing. So if they eat uh, quite a bit of it a few days in a row, they actually have kidney failures, an uh, en enormous uh, percentage of death in animals that uh, this happens to. Uh, additionally, the plant can accumulate nitrate, especially if it's dry and especially if it's heavily fertilized. So in drought agricultural years, uh, it can have enough nitrate in it to cause uh, poisonous reactions and uh, birth defects. And uh, calcium oxalate, again, is uh, one that can lead to kidney stones in susceptible people and also can bind up some of the nutrients that uh, you'd rather be able to absorb. The species in this family that the flowers are very inconspicuous, uh, that's often a clue that the plants are wind pollinated and that uh, can lead to pollen allergies. A little more information. There is Wikipedia and then another link I put in there that has an enormous amount of information if you would like to know more about the Amaranthaceae.